Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's May 16th, 2024. I got a question that I thought I'd make a short video about. Hopefully it's a short video. Uh, and it was uh, a question regarding videos that I had posted several years ago about comp composting uh, cat, uh, cat litter. Uh, and so basically in summary, what I said back then with the composting cat litter is, uh, one, I always say, uh, women, there's a chance of being uh, pregnant. Uh, there's always a, cur uh, uh, a concern. Even cleaning the litter, there's a window of a two-week period where Toxoplasma gondii, which is a protozoan parasite, uh, can get into uh, into the mother and affect uh, the, the the baby. Uh, so, th so that's just something to be aware of. And there's lots of articles about that online. But other than that, uh, the, the, what I had talked about in, in that video was how to use different organic uh, cat litters like we use uh, uh, chicken crumbles. So uh, not the big pelleted chicken feed, but we use the small crumble mix and we use that for all of our cat litter boxes. And those boxes are cleaned once or twice a day and, uh, and that material ends up getting composted. Uh, and the question uh, that I had uh, in the most recently, and I, and I do have several videos answering all different questions on this topic of composting animal feces, you know, uh, horse, cow, cattle, goat, uh, you name it. Uh, and even I've, I've made videos about composting human feces. But uh, the question recently was, uh, what if I remove the poop and I use uh, a pine-based uh, litter material, an organic material. So the thing I would say is when you're considering uh, composting cat litter, which is really beneficial for the environment, it reduces stuff going into a landfill, returns nutrients back into the soil, it, it's, it's actually a wonderful thing to do. However, uh, you want to avoid uh, the materials that have fragrances, that have sand, that have clay, um, that have any chemical additives whatsoever. Uh, and you have to look really closely for whatever, if they're using bonding, uh, bonding agents and all. So that's, that's one of the big concerns. Now, the, the concern about removing the poop, uh, uh, I, you know, when you're removing the poop uh, I, I, and just composting the urine, is that actually safer? I don't know that it's any safer. Uh, the fecal components have lots of nutrients in it. And I know people think of urine as being safer than poop. But this day and age, it's very common for people who have chronic uh, digestive disorders like uh, Clostridium difficile, chronic inflammation, uh, in their digestive system, uh, terrible gastrointestinal uh, uh, stomach aches, uh, diarrhea, uh, it, not able to go out and, and enjoy meals and entertain with people and all. And you could take all of the different antimicrobials over time, which just makes the, that infection even worse. But what, what ends up having the least amount of side effects of all of the medicinal pro properties is our fecal transplants. In other words, taking feces uh, from someone, a donor, that has a good healthy microbiome, the microorganisms that live in the digestive system, and put it in a capsule or give them uh, uh, doing a, uh, a uh, enema with the appropriate organisms. Then they have to eat the right foods, which means a dietary change. But that seems to have, is profoundly better therapeutically uh, least side effects and more effective in transition for the people's quality of life by actually having the fecal transplants instead of having all the antimicrobials and all and other treatments. So poop isn't necessarily bad. Now certainly w when I talk about composting I'm talking about thermophilic composting. So thermophilic composting is and I'm going to use our Fahrenheit as a temperature. We want to be over 130 degrees, maybe like 133, 135 degrees to 170 degrees. It could get as high as 175 degrees Fahrenheit to uh, to kill all pathogens in 
the uh, compost, whether it's urine or feces or something else that's there, and it also uh, devitalizes weed seeds. So your compost, when you, when you go to spread it out in your garden, uh, won't sprout up weed seeds like if you just turn your pile every couple of weeks and, uh, and then you're just not devitalizing those weed seeds. I hope this is making sense. So thermophilic composting is a process of maintaining, now it's, it's more than just this, but maintaining the temperature of all of the material in the pile, and that's by turning and uh, having pr uh, appropriate moisture content and appropriate oxygen content so that we're turning it so that each part of the pile, even the outsides of the pile, get turned to the inside of the pile and maintain a, uh, a period of time where the temperature is between, let's say, 135 and 107 degrees, 70 degrees Fahrenheit for, let's say, uh, several days. And that will devitalize the weed seeds inactivate any pathogen, inactivate weed seeds and uh, kill any pathogens. Uh, now there's always different things that, that, that can't do it. So uh, there's these small little proteins that aren't actually living organisms that can cause brain disease and they're prions. Many people who have, who have experienced this, it was a big thing. Uh, I'm trying to think of the common term for it right now. But these prions or prions, uh, they, they aren't necessarily devitalized by, do, by doing that. Uh, so there are things like even uh, raccoon feces has uh, a type of ascarid or a type of roundworm, Procyonus balis ascaris, I believe it is. Uh, they uh, can do a lot of damage because they, you could even stick it in formalin for 20 years and it's still viable, those, those eggs are. So there's, so there's caveats to everything that, that, I, that I talk about with respect to composting. But if you're removing with, with, with uh, kitty litter, removing any sand or clay components to the litter, using only organic materials without chemicals, without additives, uh, you're in pretty good shape. So that's my long-winded <laughs> short answer to the question. And please go back and review some of my videos on composting. I've got large composting series on the temperatures and the frequency of turning and all that. And over the years, I've learned to be able to get, uh, to get a pretty decent soil in a short period of time from all sorts of things. And I've made videos just on composting weeds, nothing but weeds, noxious weeds and all as well. So they're, they're all there, <laughs> not very well organized on my YouTube channel and all. So that's, so that's it for today's video. Thanks so much. If you have, uh, if you have any more questions, please refer to those first and then leave any co comments or questions down below. Have a safe and productive day. Li live long and prosper. Bye-bye now.